Hello everyone and welcome back to the show. Today we've got quite the episode for you. Things are starting to build and season two is really kicking off. But first, if you could join our social media at DiveCloudCast on Twitter, we have a ton of cool stuff there for you. And if you could leave a review on iTunes, that's extraordinarily helpful for us. It helps more people see our show and helps us grow that much bigger. And drum roll. We are working on the Patreon. I have decided to actually put a date on it. It's going to come out in March, so I will have more information for you on that after the show. Welcome to Dive Cloud. Ah, ah, wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh. Welcome to Dive Cloud. Dive Cloud. Oh, oh, oh. It's, wow, wow. it's Dive Cloud time now. <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> All right, so let's go around and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Jenny, and I'm playing Shava Damaxic, the tiefling warlock of the party. Hi, I am Weston Lima. I am playing Darius Smoke Brewer, the dwarven cleric of the party. I'm Brandon Korth. I'm playing a different character this time. Ooh. Which will mean. Mm. Woo! So secret. Yeah. And I'm Mike Lima. I'm extraordinarily sick, but I'm also <laughs> playing Whispers at Sunset. And I'm Colt Luther. Uh, and uh, I don't have anything it's funny to say. You're not the water we drink. <laughs> the I, the I'm, 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 which we stand. I've never been more uncomfortable <laughs> with something. Oh, yeah. so 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 I was like, I'm, oh, I oh, loved it. I'm a Relax. Murderer. You could just introduce <laughs> yourself as other characters. I'm Gold Luther. I'm a murderer. That was good. <laughs> 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 introduce yourself as Hi Hat one episode. And you that's... knew you're taking. Okay. Uh, so I have a cut scene if anyone wants to hear it. Yeah. You do. Um, I'll pass. <laughs> okay. Jenny's going to leave the room. <laughs> Bye, guys. The breeze of cool night air flows across a balcony up hundreds of feet in the sky. A purplish gray skinned man with immaculate fingernails lifts up a cigarette holder and a stream of smoke drifts away in the wind. Another person steps up beside, pink skin and short horns with a sleek pointed tail. I wish you would knock, says the gray man. As Modius rests his forearms across the banister, looking onto the shining neon of the city below. Well, where's the fun in that? As Medea smiles and the cigarette lights into flame, beginning to fall and in a rapid metallic movement is caught between sleek silver robotic fingers. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. Who's pink? Asmodeus is pink? Wait, Asmodeus? Asmodeus. Oh, yeah. is, I'm so... <laughs> you said Asmodeus? I, dang it. Oh god, Asmodeus is here. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, cutscene. Oh yeah. Yay. Cool. Cigarette holders. Robot Immaculate fingers. fingernails. <laughs> yeah, oh, right? yeah, I was like, that's an interesting word choice. Gray man. It's important, important. Problem. Well, we <laughs> zoom in on the hand. <laughs> so, the rustle of wind blows through the leaves of an extremely tall tree just at the edge of the midwood, and a banner sways across the trunk. In front, we see someone holding a stone mask in their hand with tall, long horns. We are at Yang's grave. What are you doing? Oh, I think she is just praying, I think. Yeah, she's she's gotten away from the keepers to try to get some private time. Um, and yeah, I think she's just praying there. Make a religion check for me. What's religion again? Int. Int, Int. okay, two. Two. Okay. <laughs> good good first roll. Brandon, you have the best, like, I'm not giving anything away about how bad my rules are. <laughs> my my strategy is if I always say it like it's a positive thing, there's a chance the DM might just be like, 
Yeah, that is a positive thing. Let me. You're right. It is. A two is pretty good. <laughs> Not bad. Not a one. Not a one. No. You are praying. Nothing seems to be happening in response to this this place. Minutes pass, <laughs> an hour, and then make a perception check for me. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. You hear a gentle, very soft footstep in the grass behind you. You're almost in a meditative state at this point in your prayer, Mm -hmm. and everything is just sticking out to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think she, like, quickly stands up and equips her um, scimitar um, and takes a stance against the whoever's standing behind her. You see a, <clears throat> uh, a woman with short curly hair, uh, about mid-length curly hair, and she raises her hands up in a show of peace. Mm-hmm. Now, Tess, is that any way to greet a, 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 a friend? <laughs> Madame Avidica, this... I, I, there's... We're, we're not friends. This you did the thing for did that thing for me, and I I saw what happened at the carnival. I don't think you were there to help. There was nothing I could do. I tried to help the group that Yang was a part of attacked me, and I made no aggressive action towards them. I and she steps closer. I did not intend to hurt anyone. Well, if you were truly there to help in the first place, you would have done something earlier. I wanted to see how things would play out. Geronimo wasn't necessarily going to kill them. They they took an aggressive action against him. I was unprepared. But you knew the risks, though. What are you doing here? I'm here to help. I am here to help alleviate your stresses. I'm here to help the group that attacked me unjustly. And... I hope to make this entire world a better place. And I need your help, Tess. I've seen the world that you think is so-called better, and I care to disagree. What, however, I do think that there's something wrong about the way that Yang died. It's, there was no balance in it. And it's clear that he's not ready to stay down there, gesturing to the tree and saying, he's he's reached up and he's reached out. And I think there has to be something to be done. And there is, Tess, and I am the only one that can do it and do it right. There are other people who will try and sway you and tempt you away from a way that w- can bring Yang back as he truly was. And I know how. I'm listening. There's something, a particular item. All you need to do is retrieve it from me, and I can bring Yang back exactly as he was. Happy, boisterous, laughing, dancing, clanging his cymbals. And no strings attached. The item for Yang. That's it. And if you never wish to see me again, well, as long as you don't move in front of my my path, then we are completely separate. And what is that path? I hope to save this entire world from the tower. From the tower? The tower has pierced the heart of the Midwood, and it is dying. I... There might be some truth to that, but I'm wary of your... Your avenues to completing that goal. I know Yang did also have a lot of apprehension towards the tower. So I'll take your deal. She, I'll get the, the item if we can bring him back. She holds out her hand. I'll shake her hand. Okay. Yep. Uh, you feel this swell of energy. It doesn't feel bad or evil. It's just like something has changed in the air around you. Mm. And that's it. She pulls her hand away. We have a deal. 
Thank you, Tess. Thank you for trusting me. And even if you don't trust me, I will bring Yang back. Let me be clear. This isn't for you. And there's as little trust I have for you as there can be. But this is for Yang. And once he's back, there's no deal between us. Agreed. I need you to collect a pair of shears. It's a black pair of scissors made of the heart of a dragon. Okay, and what's stopping you from getting these? (laughs) It's in a place that I cannot go. It also happens to be the place that that group is in currently. Hmm. So they have uh, gone to these ruins. They are headed towards the Underdark at quite the alarming rate. The place that they are about to go is a ground that I cannot set foot upon. Hmm. So all I need you to do is collect these shears and bring them to me. And that's it. You can find them in the ruins. I don't know how far they've gotten. All right. And we move away from you. Okay. All right. Cool. Woo! Oh, that's a lot of information. <laughs> None of our characters know. Underdark. Uh, 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 Party of Dragons. <laughs> we see our party. You all step down these crumbling stone steps. The strange language of the tower seems to dance around you, and you enter into a large, but maybe medium-sized room. In front is a door with these strange symbols and colors on it, and three empty slots, and then there are three balls on a pedestal. One is blue, one is red, and one is yellow. However, you also, as step you step down in here, you see something shift in the air, like an ethereal, translucent. It's like the light is bending around it, and then it slowly begins to fade into reality. And you see the uh, the figure of a man standing in front of these three balls. It oh, is that's right, right, the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Um, can I detect magic on this whole entire room? Yeah. So with detect magic up, um, the door and the the balls themselves are definitely magical. <laughs> the man himself has also magic sort of running throughout him. It looks <clears throat> strange in a way that you've never really seen magic move. It's like he's constantly in a state of flux, kind of. You see energies running up and down and through different sections of his body all at once. Almost like smoke. Kind of More like streams, streams through his body. He is wearing this long trench coat and his face is wrapped in black bandages as well as his hands. And he just stands there with his hands together in front of him. Hi there. Um, my name is Shava the Maxic. You are? A moment passes before he speaks. My name is Mr. Weiss. And he pulls out from, from a pocket, very slowly, a black card. And he, with two fingers, points it out towards you. My employer wishes to speak with you, and for his convenience. I take the card. No, I I would not let Shava take the card. Shava goes okay, out yeah, to I'm take it. Reach towards it. Yeah, it whispers. So I'm like, I will, I will take that for you. Then I will, I'll grab it. You grab it, and as you grab it, it's almost like ink is dripping away, but nothing is <clears throat> leaving the card. And you see the silhouette of a building that you have seen in Aether before. You don't know the name of it or anything like that, but it is a tall, pointed structure, the tallest in Aether. Interesting, I have seen this building. How, what are you doing down here if you've got connections to Aether? I moved ahead of you so that I could intercept 
I just simply wanted to relay this information. The architect wishes to speak with all of you. Architect? I've heard his name before. He's got something to do with the way the city was built. It, he had ma- a major hand in, if I'm correct with this, like he was the one who kind of created like the grid and all that. He he looks at all of you. The architect is the one who built this city. He created the technologies and the magics required to construct everything here. If you're telling the truth, this might be one of the best things that's ever happened to me. <laughs> he nods. Why would he want to meet us, though? You speak his interests. I'm simply an employee of his. What is intended to are, I cannot say. He adjusts his coat and begins to fade away. Oh. And you see that shimmering, light-bending effect. None of you can see as this figure disappears. And you hear footsteps, and you can't make out where they're going. And then nothing. I am unsettled by that. But the architect is certainly someone that I find value in meeting with. I don't know. I think he seemed kind of interesting. I think we could have a lot to learn from him, for sure. Mm-hmm. He wasn't dangerous or even threatening in the slightest. His name was Mr. Blight. He was covered in gross bandages. And your name is Whispers. <laughs> yes, and I'm quite quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I then... thought it was a pretty cool name. <laughs> I'm sorry if I overstepped, but I was lax in my duty before, and I will not be again. I did not. I feared he had some trickery. I think a bit of fear would do us all good in whatever comes our way next. And we jump back to Tess. Tess, mm-hmm. what are you up to? I'm just going to the carnival to go down to the okay. crypt. We jump straight to you in front of the steps of the ruins, and we jump back to the rest of the party. Three spheres, red, blue, yellow, and on the door, you see some shapes, and they are shapes where inset is a, a hole where one of these could, could uh, slide into. Okay, um, could we expect, inspect that wall a little bit closer? Yeah, go ahead and uh, what are you looking for? I'm looking for maybe references to... Like a, like if there's a story, if there's something already mm-hmm. here that would lead towards these certain colors needing to go certain places, like maybe a scene of like a battle versus a scene of like the ocean, mm-hmm. things like that. Okay, so you see, as you go up to the door, these shapes are actually colored. So the triangle is um, purple colored, the square is orange colored, and the... Pentagon is green colored. So it's sort of these three vertical empty slots. There is this shape that this is what it is. There's a shape that goes like in a large triangle from the top down to the bottom. And that is around those three empty sockets. And then there's those three colored shapes up above. And then there's the three spheres sitting on the pedestal. So triangle square. And yeah, pentagon. Pur- purple triangle, orange square, square green, green pentagon. Color so theory. we, yeah, we have all the yeah. primary colors, and all the secondary colors are on the wall. So are, you, are you hitting us with light wave frequencies? <laughs> Let's put them in I don't know. Use what, use what you know. Early in the morning for such <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> Maybe we just have to put the two in here with the coordinating shapes. So this one's a triangle. The triangles. Green? Or the, purple. the triangle's purple. purple. Triangle's purple. So maybe if we put the red and the blue in this one and then leave the yellow here. Maybe we're trying to match the shapes to the color guide. Yeah, I, I'll yeah. grab the spheres and give that a whirl. So which, which one are you trying? Um, the triangle. And we're going to put the primary colors in to make yellow, right? Make um, we're gonna put purple. purple. Yeah, so you put the spheres together. Mm-hmm. So one goes in and it 
slots backwards. And then as you put the second one over, it's like there's a beam of light coming through and you get the new color. Mm -hmm. And as you pull the sphere out, you then have a, a purple. Oh, sphere. Purple so, sphere. Whoa. So the one, the sphere that we put in the socket is now purple. So whichever one you put in the back is the same, and then the new one's purple. But as as you let it sit, it begins to fade back to its original color. I believe we have to put these in in such a way that we match the colors of the shapes, and then leave them there. So purple is red and blue. Yep. Orange, Orange is yellow and, yellow and red, and green is blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. So the yellow has to stay on the outside till the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it. red, blue, yellow is the order, right? This is this is a good well, puzzle, Cole. <laughs> orange is, is the second puzzle. color, though. So, but we have to sacrifice one of the colored balls to stay purple, unless we do a different color first. I don't know. I'm done. It's <laughs> over. I've gone as far as I can. Um, I want to see. I want to put all of them into the the wall and see what happens when they're all three in there. Okay. Tell me exactly which colors you're putting where. First, I'm going to put blue, red in the middle, then yellow. Okay, so as you slot these in, there's this grinding sound from the door and then it stays closed. And you feel a strange shivering <laughs> sensation of energy in your chest. All right, well, I'm already in this, so uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to switch around the red and the blue and see if that wow. does it. If I'm cursed, I'm cursed. <laughs> <laughs> you switch you switch around the red and the blue, and the door begins to open. Boom! Yes! I mean, you can just force it, but the consequence is already done. <laughs> what? No, I was just saying, like, I was right in my order. Is, it, is this oh, anything I need to... Oh, I like, I think I did figure it out. Sheet. <laughs> I'm keeping it in mind, but yeah. You can write it on your sheet if you want. I, uh, Weird good. door shivers. Yeah, no, door I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> I meant like an effect that I need to worry about. No, like I, a point I of have, exhaustion. Maybe this requires a haiku. I have that effect <laughs> on my end. Okay, so as this door begins to open, Tess, you hear a strange sound of stone grinding mm -hmm. from down beneath. Mm -hmm. And you are standing over these this uh, entrance to these ruins. Well, it seems they've already started without me. I'm gonna walk down. Okay. Are, are you doing any sort of attempts at stealth? I don't think any of you have ever met Tess before, right? No. I don't think any of you have like seen her explicitly, just the keepers. Could Yang yeah. even talk about her? Uh, yeah, he did, and the first time. Oh, <laughs> his very first thing. Storytelling. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm sure he's probably talked about her after that, I guess. But, okay, I think I'm going to come down, not stealthing. Okay. Um, and, um, yeah, I think announce my presence as I'm, like, entering into the zone that they would be able to hear me with. Okay. Uh, and just say, hello, is anyone down here? Hello? Um, Whispers would immediately put his hands on his weapon and put himself between... The others and this new person. Darius would shout, Hold your wee shit, be quiet. I don't know who it is quite yet. <laughs> you definitely hear all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can hear all that. Let's just, <laughs> let's just keep going. I'm I'm harmless. I've come here to help. If that if that means anything. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> I I was friends with Yang. I'm I'm Tess. He might have talked about me before. I would look back at everybody else. Like, I'd still be, my body's facing forward. My head just spins around and looks at the other two. I, 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 would, I would nod at you be like, I think I, I think I remember hearing the story about the test. The test. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he probably left me out of all the parts of the pranks that he used to do. And I'd be there to make sure that he seeked balance after, after the bad things that he would do. Mm. I'm like outwardly like cold sweat, <laughs> and that like oh no, oh no, the I help keeper. facilitate that. <laughs> uh, so, 
Yeah, and then I think I'll walk out and okay. like present myself. Describe your character. Oh. Um, so yeah, Tess is standing like fully tall. She's I think it's like seven feet when you see her, but that's a majority of like is that horde. Like she's probably like two foot tall, horns sticking up the top to make up the final two feet. So she's st- regular height. She's about five feet, I think. Furry, um, all around, like a oddly long neck going up. Otherwise humanoid with um, whatever the backward knee situation is. <laughs> <laughs> that that the four-legged. Kinda. Yeah. Go-legged. And I think she has probably, I think she has hooves for her actual feet and then her hands are hands. Shava's going to feel for some reason undescribable jealousy that her ear horns are so much longer than her. <laughs> and, <laughs> she doesn't know how to put her finger on I'll it. And I'll say she they are like it. perfectly <laughs> symmetrical too. Like oh, the, oh, they're so symmetrical. The twists that go up are all like, yeah. I'm going to like sit there and I'm going to like kind of touch them up. The new girl just like, came to school and you're like, she's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise you do see that she does have a scimitar that is sheathed right now. Um, and, uh, light armor. Yeah. Yeah, she wants it. Okay. There would be no real standing down with whispers, and he'd yeah. just look at you and be like, why are you here? I'm here because I've, well, I've been here the whole time, in a way. I've been with the Keepers. I joined them to help follow Yang and keep him safe. If I recall, you did kind of try to kill us. I will say that I didn't offer any lethal blows to you. You weren't the one that I threw the books at, were you? No, that wasn't me. I want to I want to talk to that man. That that was um that was funny. He was a bit traumatized after that. I'll take, <laughs> I'll take him off it. Balance. I'll take it. I've been following you guys since our first uh seeing you around the the Albear uh, and it's not been easy keeping you guys safe from the keepers. I will say Yang is makes a uh, makes his presence quite known. Um, but now Yang is gone, and I'm not sure what to do. I left the keepers. They they didn't approve. They found out what what I was doing, and and now I'm. Just trying to do what I the best thing I can for Yang. My head would turn around again and look at you guys. <laughs> my my head is like cocked to the side and I look like I'm in thought, is what you would see from Shava. Mm. There is just thinking too. I I definitely understand that this isn't easy for you guys, but I I know that Yang was seeking his own balance. And I don't think that his life was taken at the right time. I think that the scales have been tipped and I think something needs to be done to, to tip them back. And I think you guys are on the right path to, to doing that. Inside check? Yo, Go we hand that never I'm later. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, um, but I want to insight yeah, that. I, I guess make a persuasion check. Okay. Um, I don't think this is true. I don't think you're outwardly but, yeah. lying. Though. Yeah. No, 18. 18. And I, I think, also rolled an 18. Oh. I, and I think I'm going to use... Well, so... I, oh, 18 minus one. So I got 17. Oh. Okay. Oh, 18, so, I have zero. Nice. Okay, so... <laughs> so. Oh, gosh. <laughs> nothing inherently seems wrong. Like, Tess seems to be telling the truth as far as you can tell. But you're still uncertain. There's something about... Tess's voice that just makes you think that there might be more, but you don't know anything else. Okay, um, I'm going to use my awakened mind feet, and I'm going to talk in the heads of both Whispers and Darius, which I don't think I've done before. <laughs> no, you have with me. You oh, did, I did that, that, I did that with you. I never did Definitely. it with Darius. I have not done that with Darius. Um, and I'm going to say, I can't tell her intentions, but she seems to be telling the truth. Darius is going to look at her and just go, you can do that? <laughs> like, out loud, too. <laughs> I, I, like, give you a nod and then, like, a questionable look. Like, why are you talking about it? Don't acknowledge it. Sorry. And then you hear from... You guys which... are clearly talking to each other by some magical means, it would seem. ABC conversation. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, Whispers would ask if you were okay with bringing her along, then. I don't see a reason not to. I can think of like 27 reasons not to. She's an unknown factor, but we are going into unknown circumstances, and we are down a member. I do want to clarify something. So, you've been following us all this time, and you wait until now to make your presence known to us. I've spoken to Yang once before, back in Gravestone. I needed him to know that he was safe. And I think he he tried to communicate to you guys. He was uh, whispering, but not, not very quietly. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I was his uh, person on the inside trying to help you guys. That does add up. Mm-hmm. The more yeah. she talks about Yang, the more she seems like she's trustworthy. <laughs> Enough, at least. I think it's fine for now. Mm-hmm. I, I don't see any reason not to.